few notes with you this morning because before we get to answering your questions, I want to make sure that we get some issues on um, the record. And before we do that, how about we wipe our glasses? Is that okay? Let me start by saying that I am so happy uh, to be here. I am proud to stand here as the Democratic nominee for mayor of the city of Philadelphia, sixth largest city in the nation and the birthplace of democracy. Um, to everyone who supported our campaign, um, who I was not able to celebrate with on election night, um, I do have one thing to say, and that is together we did it. We did it together, and I am uh, I'm excited about that. Our message has taken hold across the city, but most importantly in the neighborhoods and the communities who are closest to the pain of gun violence, neighborhood blight, struggling schools, and quite frankly, a lack of economic opportunity. Now, with our win, to me, these communities, they are now closest to the power. And, and the message is important because what we did was we ignited a belief that, and you would often hear me say on the campaign trail that I had the audacity to believe that Philadelphia can be the safest and cleanest big city in America and that we can close the gap between the haves and have nots and that we can literally restore hope and pride back to our city again. So that's relative to the campaign. Now let me get to the health in the root canal. If you Google root canal in our area, it is pretty popular right now. Uh, let me just give you a tad bit of history here. Um, back in February, um, I found out that I had a root canal from about 20, 25 years ago that had actually fractured. And um, I want to just note that, and I have to say this for the record because my dentist, and you will never know who he is, but my dentist has said, this is not fair. You have to tell them that I advised you. So let me say this. My dentist recommended oral surgery immediately, told me that there was no way that I could save the tooth. Um, and I said, I hear you, I respect you, I appreciate you, but there is no way that I can stop right now. In the midst of, uh, of this campaign, we had multiple forums, um, we had multiple uh, debates, uh, and quite frankly, we were very focused on crisscrossing um, the city. Um, and so I said, can you just help me get through? right now, and that meant, you know, you had to take an antibiotic to ensure that no infection would actually build up um, in, in your body. Um, against his wishes, he uh, said to me, yes, we have to do that anyway, um, but uh, I could not wait until uh, the primary, after the primary election. So it was actually, people have said, oh wow, that night she went and had a dental emergency. No, the surgery was not on election night. I had surgery the Friday before the election and the tooth was literally removed. Now in typical Sherelle Parker behavior, I left forgetting that I was still numb and I was like, uh oh, I can do this. And uh, I continued with the full schedule that evening. Uh, some of you may have even seen me uh, on the trail, um, but uh, it became clear that uh, I needed to get that surgery and I did that on Friday. Um, I talked about keeping um, a full schedule of that Friday evening and you will remember uh, that weekend was GOTV weekend. How was I going to rest and be at home um, uh, during GOTV weekend? We couldn't afford it and we were able to get uh, through it. I needed the campaign and I did not give myself time to heal. I want to acknowledge that uh, publicly, I did not. So by the time the polls closed on election night, everything literally caught up uh, with me. Um, and uh, I, I had to stop, not because Sherelle Parker said stop, but because 
uh, my body said, you will stop uh, right now. And uh, that's when I went. Uh, I checked myself uh, in at the University of Pennsylvania uh, Hospital. Um, it was there, unfortunately, while everyone was enjoying the excitement of the results coming in. Uh, I was, I had some company, maybe not the company I wanted, uh, but uh, I can remember while I was uh, in the ER, uh, the, the doctor came in uh, and he, he said, well, uh, they seem to be having such a great time without you. Uh, talking about the uh, headquarters, he said, and you're here with me. Um, I was released um, uh, that that early uh, that morning, uh, and I am nearly back at 100% uh, right now. I have to go back. For those of you who've had dental work, you know you have to go back for follow-up, and so I will be taking care of that. Um, the next thing I want to address is um, the meeting with our uh, governor, Pennsylvania Governor Josh Shapiro. Um, for those of you who are familiar with me, um, you know that I have been a coalition builder and an organizer all uh, of my life. Um, and I know the power of delivering tangible results at all levels of government, directly to the people of our great city. And I also know how important it is to have a strong relationship with our Harrisburg leaders. And so today, um, meeting with our chief executive here in the Commonwealth, um, it was no coincidence. It was uh, very intentional that he be uh, the first executive that I had the opportunity to sit down um, and talk with. Sherelle, what did you and the governor uh, talk about? Um, we talked about ways to find bipartisan support to fund some of our biggest initiatives um, that include public safety. I mentioned to the governor that, um, you know, God's will, and you all know I will not take my foot off the gas. We have a general election to get, uh, to get through in November, and uh, we're going to be working hard to earn the vote of every Philadelphian to ensure that we can do so. Um, but restoring our police department to its full complement, and that means using every tool that we can to make sure we get officers on the job. In addition, making sure that we have those 300 foot patrol and bike officers that you heard me talked about so much, community policing being an essential part of our campaign. Um, we also talked about one of my, my children, my baby, uh, PHLTCB, which will be the tool uh, that we attempt to use, um, not attempt, we will, to eliminate the Philadelphia moniker uh, that has had such a strong grip um, on our city. Um, and, and we need to be, you know, picking up trash on sidewalks and, uh, and on our streets. And we need to do that around the clock. So and sanitation, when you think about sanitation workers and their pickup, that will have to increase dramatically um, in order for us to allow Philadelphians to see a culture of, of trash and, uh, you know, be changed in our city. And we're going to work to do that. The next thing that we talked about was economic opportunity, uh, funding support for small businesses, uh, raising the minimum wage, um, and, and using uh, resources um, at an intergovernmental level. How do we access federal, state, and even local resources and leverage them all um, to ignite equity investments? Notice that you did not hear me talk about loans. If you talk to uh, business owners, particularly in black and brown communities, access to a loan is not what has prevented them from growing. It's been access to equity capital to give them the opportunity to grow. Um, and finally, um, and the governor and I, and this has been the case, and you know, for those of you who don't know, he and I have worked together uh, for many, many years, and his love for public education, my love for public education as a former uh, English teacher, um, those shared values, they go back a long ways. And we talked about the Commonwealth Court decision. Um, we talked about um, the potential um, resources uh, that are needed to address the infrastructure challenges here in our city, particularly with the, uh, the building of our schools. Um, 
We, we talked about being innovative and creative uh, with our scheduling for, for education and how we deliver public education uh, in the city. Um, and, and, and finally, they're not being sort of an us versus them, uh, you know, perspective as it relates to advocacy uh, for public education in the city, but doing our best to make sure we're focused on quality seats with quality instruction in 21st century modern buildings. Um, and finally, he and I talked about uh, working together, um, establishing a work group with key state officials and um, members of the uh, administration, and uh, I'm excited um, about that. Um, I'm going to right now, I will, well, I do want to go through this last bullet too. I'll skip because somebody's going to ask a question and I want to have to repeat myself. So I'll save it to respond to your question. But I want to mention this. A lot of people have asked me, you know, aside from your health, Sherelle, and feeling better, what do you feel that the, the most pressing issue is that you face right now as the Democratic nominee for mayor of the city of Philadelphia? And I have been uh, very clear in affirming that right now, this is the unifying moment here in our city. I don't care who you uh, voted for. I don't care what section of the city uh, you live in, your zip code, what your political philosophy or ideology is, our democratic process, um, you know, we work through it. Uh, we now have the results, and we need all of Philadelphia to unify in order to move our city uh, forward. And uh, with that being said, um, you know, I want to note that one of the hallmarks of my time as an elected, it has always been to bring people together who don't always uh, agree on everything. And this was something that you have to blame on Harrisburg, where I didn't have a luxury of saying either it's my way or the highway. I literally had to do things the old fashioned way, sit down and have a conversation with people and figure out how we get to yes. Um, and that didn't stop during our campaign. Um, they are not here, but I want to say um, to my former colleagues who suspended their campaigns and uh, who were uh, very uh, much uh, involved in, in helping us to get to this point, as council member, former council member Derek Green, a longtime friend, a colleague, and, and, and quite frankly, we work together. Uh, you know, for the boss lady of all boss ladies, Councilwoman uh, Marion Tasco. Uh, DG, uh, you know, I'm so grateful for your support. Um, Maria Canones Sanchez, uh, MQS, um, I want you to know that uh, I am excited and looking forward to working um, with you all and also to the other uh, candidates. I am so grateful that we had such a competitive environment. Um, uh, people uh, have said uh, to me, Sherelle, that you know, it was a thousand people, you know, running for mayor of Philadelphia. You know, did you like it? I love the idea that people had a chance to hear different perspectives, um, to hear different prescriptions being offered as solutions to problems facing our city. I thank each of them. Um, for rolling up their sleeves and doing what uh, Roosevelt would say, getting in the arena of standing up to the scrutiny, answering the questions and putting their best foot forward. To each of them, I want you to know, I thank you so very much. Um, well, I did have a two or three day uh, lag as a result of our health challenges, but uh, they uh, do know that we will all be uh, getting together because I will be looking forward to work working with each and every um, one of them along with our legislative leaders at the uh, local state and uh, federal level with that being said I want to take a few questions and uh, uh, I, I want to, I'm sorry I, I, let me help you kind of identify this let me excuse me let me uh, see here I just saw someone. Oh, a gentleman was here and he had his hands raised. Where was the Tribune? They just somebody was here and they just had their hands raised. They must have disappeared um, that fast. Yes. It 
was pain that goes like this, throbbing just intensely. And I knew that it was not something that would allow me to do what I love. Uh, and that was one, I wanted to see the results in real time. Uh, but more important to me that night, especially when seeing what the results were, I wanted to jam. And I couldn't jam that night because my, my jaw was, was thriving. And uh, it, it required that I, that I go to the hospital. Well, no, I listen, I do have to do follow-up because I think that there's some more things that, um, that I, I need, to, need to work on. But we're, we're, doing, we're doing well. With a low voter turnout, 27% or so, and uh, the number of votes that you won, do you believe that you've been given a mandate to lead? And what's your message to those who either didn't vote or didn't vote for you? Um, let me let me note for the record, Jeff. I appreciate that question, and it's uh, it's actually a, a, a very good one. Um, we had a higher turnout than the last open mayoral primary. Let me state that for the record. I want to just say that one more time because sometimes when people read things in the paper, um, those facts aren't you know quite as clear as we would like them to be. Um, we had higher turnout than the last open mayoral primary. However, turnout should be much higher than the 27% that we saw last week. And I would argue to each of you, that is why this meeting today with Governor Shapiro was essential. Uh, low turnout to me translates into, equates to apathy, frustration, lack of hope, uh, believing in government and they don't feel that a difference go vote why now i'm not ever telling you that i believe that that is an excuse it is not a an excuse but i know i will um be super focused um intensely focused on ensuring that people philadelphians get a chance to see their tax dollars at work in their neighborhoods and that will help to make them believers finally i wanted to uh say this I did get some calls and text messages from some people who says, Sherelle, your old council district, the ninth district, they really showed up uh, and showed out um, and supported you. You know, your old uh, state house district boundaries, you really got a lot of support there. Listen, I want to be very clear. The reason that is, it, it doesn't happen through osmosis. It's because the people who live there, they have grown accustomed to making a connection between government, the, the delivery of city services, and what it means to their lives. Um, the, the converse is also true, right? If you don't believe that government can work for you, then you don't participate in the process, Jeff. And, and too many Philadelphians don't believe that government can work for them. And we're gonna be working very hard to change that narrative. One, it, it means that we will be uh, sitting down. Of course, you heard me mention all of the uh, the candidates for mayor of the city of Philadelphia and talking with them. Um, we will also make sure that we are continue to be in every community, communicating with stakeholders. Now, for those of you who know me, I'm a well-structured and I'm a, I believe in organization and I won't do anything haphazard. So if we are meeting with small business owners uh, here in our city, I may do that by council district and have a meeting with small business owners per council district, faith-based uh, leaders, uh, business leaders here in our city, the philanthropic community. Why, why are all of these key stakeholders essential? Because we are not a monolith. And if anyone, I, you know, you've heard me say throughout the campaign, and, you know, I'm not going to be a, a, a candidate who's concerned about being politically correct. I'm always going to give you my authentic self, no matter how much it pains some people, even when I speak about myself in third party. Um, but, but let me say this. People want to know that you hear them. They do not want policy prescriptions being um, you know, implemented, designed and implemented without knowing that you hear them.
Now, while we're going to listen to all stakeholders, I also want you to know that there are going to be some people who are not going to like, uh, you know, some of my decision making. Um, and or, uh, again, the policy plans that I will be proffering that you will hear in much more detail um, as we, we proceed closer to the general election. But always know, no one will ever be able to say that Sherelle Parker did not hear them, even when we may agree to disagree. And I don't care uh, who you were. I told you I wanted a, a coalition that transcended race, class, socioeconomic status, religion, gender, sexual orientation, identity, and we did just that. You all can banner about what percentage of what for each part of that coalition, but every part of, of what every constituency that, that I just described, they were a part of the Parker team, and I am extremely proud of it, but the election is over. Now it is time to get prepared to win the general election, Right, and, and, and that means the, our, our Democratic Party, um, all of the stakeholders who, who helped us, um, those block captains and committee people and ward leaders who were on the ground, never forget their work coupled with the other stakeholders. You know, labor, uh, you, we all know the building trades did, a, did an awesome job. Uh, clearly, they were a strong foundation. The carpenters, SEIU, um, local 427 and 403, um, out of the sanit sanitation workers and, and, and the streets department. Um, can't think of the local uh, Sincere and Aaron, but Fred Wright comes to mind. A local out of district council uh, 47. All of those folks who were uh, 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 an essential part of uh, allowing us to uh, have this victory, they are, they're the foundation of the coalition. But now the coalition includes all of Philadelphia, and I won't have it any other way. Yes. You, once, I'm sorry. Hey. Well, now, but Pat, that is an essential question. One of the things that I am working on right now, because that structure is extremely important, and quite frankly, I can't wait until, uh, you know, when is the general elections? November the 7th? So, I, you know, I can't wait to November the 8th to, to begin working to put uh, all that we need to put in, in order uh, together. So I'm working on actually building a formal structure a formal structure outside of the politics, outside of my campaign structure that will actually give me the ability to staff up because I can't do all of this alone. I will need staff to actually carry through the organization of the meetings with the stakeholders, uh, plans that we have to put together. So uh, we're working with um, some of the best and brightest lawyers. Uh, in the city, and, and it was such a good question uh, that uh, you'll be hearing from me very soon uh, with hopefully uh, what will be a, the, the formal structure that we put together. But we've been on that for a little bit now. One of the things that you heard me say that unconstitutional stop and frisk in the city uh, is, is not legal because Sherelle Parker formally introduced the legislation in our city to say that there is no place for unconstitutional stop and frisk. With that being said, Terry stops are what I wholeheartedly embrace as a tool that law enforcement needs to make the public safety of our city their number one priority. It is a legal tool. A crime must be uh, committed or they must know that it is going uh, to be committed in order for them to have the just cause and reasonable suspicion to stop someone. They are called Terry Stops. There are people who consistently want to use stop and frisk as because it's um, it's 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 a very uh, intense uh, and quite frankly, it's painful, particularly for black people like me, right? And a mother of a ten-year-old black boy, um, and and coming, you know, living at the intersection of race and gender all of my life. I know what it's like, and I've seen what it's like, particularly when I've had black men, you know, who I've loved and cared about, stopped, right, for no apparent reason other than the fact uh, that they were black. 
They were black men. I know what that feels like. And again, we get through the general election and under no circumstances will that kind of behavior be allowed to exist in the Parker administration. I just won't tolerate it. But I'm also going to make sure that Terry stops and every other legal tool that is needed, paired with great training, right? And zero tolerance for any misuse and or abuse of authority is available for our, our, our police department. I'm sorry. Uh, we will get through into a general election. I will then work formally with my campaign team and we will decide what the parameters are for uh, how that uh, will go, but we will work on that then. Yes, Aldea. Well, for both uh, former council members, uh, Derek Green and Maria Quinones Sanchez, uh, I, I value the fact that they uh, not only suspended their campaigns, but after suspending their campaigns, they were intentional about endorsing uh, my candidacy. And I always want to acknowledge them. They are thought leaders here in the city of Philadelphia who add uh, great value. And uh, specifically, what does that look like? We will figure out what uh, that looks like uh, in the future. But right now, I want Philadelphia to know that the two of them, you know, it's particularly when I think about the Latino community, you talk about uh, the, the, the formula. Uh, I, I'm thinking about the stakeholders, uh, Tina Tartaglione, and, and you know, you get in trouble, you start calling names, but uh, my former colleague Angel Cruz and Danilo Burgos and Jose Horral and uh, uh, Carlos, just so many people who were a part of helping uh, to make that uh, happen. But though my former colleagues, they are extremely uh, important, and I look forward to working with them in the future. Yes. I can't hear you. Many people access to an opportunity is when someone has laid a concrete path, and for me that would be concrete pavers that will give a generation of, of girls, black girls, Latino girls, other girls of color, white girls, I don't care what kind of girls, and the girl dads, they like really are excited, around. I, I have three daughters and you have to come and meet my three daughters, so I'm really excited, it's not just the moms and the daughters, the, the girl dads are excited too, and um, I, I'm, I'm excited about it, um, but, but I'm also excited to, to know that I didn't get here alone, I'm not, I'm not superwoman. You know, I stand on the shoulders of some women who generations ago, they could have been standing up as the Democratic nominee for mayor were it not for their, you know, inability to raise the funds needed to compete with, with most of the time, you know, men you know, who had much more of a leg up as it related to fundraising or people who were born wealthier than they were. So, of course, my boss lady who is still alive and mother mentor Marion Tasco, Augusta Clark, Roxanne Jones. I mean, I think about Anna Verna. I think about a Joan Krajewski. I don't know whether or not any of you know who those women were. See Dolores Tucker. But I saw those women in live and in living color, and I saw them doing their work. So if I can find a way to add value, to motivate, inspire, and encourage a generation of girls to say, you know, wow, no one can put me in the box, right? You know, I, I really can be and do uh, whatever it is I want to. That makes me feel uh, really good. And to all of the girl dads, big shout outs because they've really, I've been in Walmart, the, you know, the drugstore, I've been in a lot of different places uh, seeing people, supermarket, and the girl dads have been like, come and take a picture with my daughter. So I'm like, okay, here I am. So thank you. Shout out to you girl dads too. Assuming you're elected in November. You yes, ma'am. Can you explain a little more about your are talking Well, you know, I thank you so very much for uh, that question. It's been so uh, interesting listening to people infer 
what, what it means without asking a question. So the one thing that it doesn't mean that I thought I made clear on the campaign trail is that our children would be sitting at a traditional school desk at a tra in a traditional classroom from 7.30 in the morning to 6 o'clock, you know, at night with a traditional instructor. If that is how you interpreted my my uh, recommendation that this be something that we, uh, you know, explore and potentially use here in the city of Philadelphia, you've gotten it all wrong. Some of the things that you heard me talk about was school opening, not listening, this is not just for educational opportunity, these are also economic development issues. Schools open at 7.30, as early as 7.30 in the morning because parents need to get to work. We, we forget, we, we tell parents we want them on a path to self-sufficiency and we want to connect you to an employment opportunity that will you know pay your living wage, health care, retirement, security. Oh, but by the way, school doesn't open up until 9 o'clock. Give me a break uh, uh, here. So we want school open as early as 7.30 and open as late as 6 p.m. And what do you want to see in those schools, Sherelle? I want to see everything that I see available um, that was available when, you know, I was uh, in school and, and some additional, especially when it comes to the technology and the, and the fin fin uh, financial literacy, the coding I want to see in school. But I also want to see the building trades. And that was a huge part of the platform um, that was so uh, well embraced. Um, by Philadelphians from all walks of life in understanding that all of our children are not interested in taking the traditional collegiate uh, path to the and that they wanted to have access uh, to those careers uh, available in the building trades and to have the building trades willing to you know say listen we know that this is a part of your platform and you know we want to help you and as a matter of fact these are some ways that gives us something to look forward to so let's just talk about when you think of year-round schooling under a Parker administration um, and I was happy to see the superintendent talk about a potential pilot because if you looked and read my plan as it was proffered I talked about a pilot um, as well and you you get a chance to see what it would look like here in the city of Philadelphia you know that is a certain uh, number of uh, schools at the elementary middle and um, high school uh, 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 levels, but um, I'm really looking uh, forward to it. And that's why, again, the conversation with Governor Shapiro, our legislative leaders, I've spoken with all of them uh, in Harrisburg. That's why that uh, relationship is, is, is so important. And quite frankly, a relationship, the bipartisan relationship uh, in Harrisburg is extremely helpful. And this is going to be the last question. Last question. Yes, ma'am. Let me uh, just say that, that right now we have a system in place that says that the man or woman who achieves the most or acquires the most votes uh, is the winner of that election. Um, and I support that process. Um, I will uh, take a look at lots of uh, other prescriptions in the future. Uh, but right now, this is the environment that mayors in the city of Philadelphia have competed under for the past 100 years. And Sherelle Parker has the potential to become the 100th mayor in the city of Philadelphia. And it will be the democratic structure upon which, if I'm fortunate to win the general election, that I will have uh, achieved such. Um, and if there are other ideas uh, for us to look at in the future, future, uh, of, of course I am. But I want to also be very clear um, that I am, you know, I'm a mom to a boy who's 10 years old. Uh, and I also um, was a child athlete. I ran track and uh, I was a cheerleader. And um, I also don't believe in giving trophies just because everyone doesn't get a trophy. You, dignity doesn't come from everyone getting a trophy. Dignity comes when you work hard in a race right and and you run and and a, a race of any kind no matter what it is uh and so that prescription uh, is one um that i support but as usual you know you're never going to hear me say that my mind is closed to any thought or idea i'm always um open 
to hearing other ideas and thoughts. Listen, I want to thank you all so, so very much for being uh, here uh, today. Um, and you will talk with us uh, much, much more. Thank you so very much and have a good one.